All smiles as Australia and China's top diplomats untangle a tricky relationship. Penny Wong has met more than a dozen foreign ministers during the ASEAN and East Asia summits this week, but the stakes were the highest for this meeting. Director Wong, it's a pleasure to meet you again too. China says relations with Australia have improved, but says Australia must not discriminate against Chinese investment and businesses. Australia's list of grievances is a bit longer. We have continued to uh, call for uh, the removal of all trade impediments uh, and make the representations that you are aware of about Australians held in China. China's sluggish movement on trade barriers has raised questions on whether it's appropriate for Anthony Albanese to make a symbolic visit to meet Xi Jinping in Beijing this year. And in what she described as frank discussions, Penny Wong again raised China's lack of movement on freeing two detained Australians in Beijing, plus a third Australian who's facing the death penalty. We will continue uh, to work uh, to uh, uh, navigate our differences wisely. I've said that we can uh, grow our bilateral relationships while safeguarding our national interest, provided both countries navigate our, our differences wisely. Wang Yi isn't the only diplomatic heavyweight Penny Wong is meeting here. America's Secretary of State Antony Blinken is also in Jakarta, trying to reassure Southeast Asian nations that the US is committed to the region as China's influence grows. That means a region where countries are free to choose their own path and their own partners, where problems are dealt with openly, not through coercion. One foreign minister she certainly won't be rubbing shoulders with is Russia's Sergei Lavrov. While he's a pariah in Australia, the US and Europe, Vladimir Putin's top diplomat still gets a warm welcome in Southeast Asia, despite the suffering in Ukraine. Bill Bertels, ABC News, Jakarta.